This is an Atago pocket brick salt meter. Atago is a Japanese company making scientifically accurate devices for measuring various aspects of liquids. For ramen, we are most concerned about the salt percentage and the thickness of the soup. In the past, you'd use a separate salt meter and an analog refractometer to measure the soup's thickness, called bricks. With my new digital pocket bricks salt meter, it's all done on one unit. Hold on, what? I just came here to see Delicious Ramen. What's with the science lesson? Delicious Ramen is a combination of intense meaty soup and a perfectly salty impact. Ramen chefs strive for consistency with these two factors, and subtle changes can ruin a great bowl. When cooking up a massive pot of soup, whether it's a light chicken-based shoyu ramen or a thick pork style, many factors can affect the outcome. The quality of ingredients, the time of cooking, even the outside temperature and humidity can have an effect on the soup that's cooking for 8 to 12 hours. That's where a refractometer, which uses light to measure the bricks, comes into play. Bricks is a measurement of dissolved solids in water, aka the thickness of the soup. As a soup boils down, the bricks generally goes up. A light soup like this homemade chicken stock I made has a relatively low bricks of around 3. If I cooked it for many, many more hours, it would probably go up to around 6 or 7. For reference, a thick tonkotsu ramen from Kyushu probably has a bricks around 10. Some ramen, like this mega-thick niboshi style, also known as cement style, has a brick so high that a lot of the analog meters can't even register it. These digital scales also compensate for the temperature of the soup. If you're using an analog model, best to let it cool to room temperature. While these scales use the refraction of light to tell you how thick a soup is, this digital one also uses electrical conductivity to tell you the concentration of salt. This is particularly useful when making a salt-rich tare, the seasoning liquid that goes into every bowl of ramen. My book, Ramen at Home, has a few recipes for tare. Let's look at the shoyu version. Put two grams each of shiitake and kombu in two cups of water. Let it sit in the fridge overnight. Put it over medium-high heat, and when it hits a boil, immediately take it off and strain it. Put this liquid back on the heat and bring it to a boil. Once that boil hits, kill the heat and add the katsuobushi. Let it sit for a few minutes. By the way, that's two grams of katsuobushi as well. Strain it through a fine sieve or a coffee filter. Weigh out some of this liquid and add exactly 17% salt by weight. Get out a calculator and multiply the weight of the dashi by 0.17 to get that number. Finally, add equal amounts of soy sauce to this salty dashi. One cup of tare will be enough for around eight servings of ramen, so you might as well make a lot and just keep it in the fridge. The atago unit is very simple to use. Zero it out with some water, wipe it down, and you're ready to test. For the tare testing, I diluted each down to a 10% solution. A sauce using lots of shoyu aka soy sauce. For my tare recipe, the final number for salt was 1.36%. Multiply this by 10 and you get the actual number, 13.6% salt solution. For reference, straight soy sauce is around 15-18% to 18 salt. I have all of these other books with tare recipes in them as well. In a future video, I'll make them all and test them out with the salt meter to see how they differ. If you want to see that video early, I'll give early access to my supporters on Patreon. Thanks for the love. It's important to dilute your tare before testing. Simply make a 10 to 1 water to tare solution and you'll be good to go. But wait! This new Atago pocket brick salt meter has a neat function. Once you develop your recipe, you can save it into the device. Run a couple of tests at different dilutions and now it's all in the system to stay. Next time I bake a batch of Ramen at Home's official shoyu tare, I can test it out with just a couple drops. If you're interested to see exactly how you do this, and if you're interested in seeing a little bit more about this unit in particular, I'll link to the Atago website down below. They have a nice five or six minute long video that really goes through all the details of this unit. Check it out if you're interested in getting one of these. And I want to thank Atago for sending these units over to me. They were really fun to play with and test out some soup from different shops and test my own uh, creations. As the name suggests, it is a pocket-sized unit, so I might carry it with me on some trips and just sort of test some ramen soup on the sly. See what other shops are coming up with. For a home cook, this is just a nice bonus, but for a professional shop, this can be a big time saver. 
I met up with Chef Tsukara-san, who runs a few ramen shops in Tokyo and Nagano under the Bond of Hearts group, to ask him about how he uses his own Atago units. はい、え、僕はえ、ラーメンを日頃から作っているんですけども、喉安心してお客様に美味しいスープが提供できるということです。え、僕はですね、最初は日本人の人たちにいろんなラーメンを食べてもらいたいということで、1店舗1店舗味が違うラーメンを今まで手掛けてきたんですけども、これからラーメンは世